previously purchased a ticket to fly out of Florida to escape the upcoming hurricane. I landed in New York and thought that I'd fly from there to visit some family. A number of things fell through, but I was instead able to, for some reason, to find an incredibly inexpensive ticket to fly to Switzerland. A ticket from the JFK airport in New York City to Zurich for something like under $500. To give some context, in case this is listened to in the future, the current price, the closing price for an ounce of gold today is $1,347.40. So I thought, if these other plans aren't going to work and I have this ticket for less than $500, well, I'm going to Switzerland. So I switched airports having landed in LaGuardia and got on the plane instead at the JFK airport. It was mostly an overnight flight. So I found my seat, had a conversation with the gentleman sitting next to me about how he ended up moving to Switzerland while being a US citizen. Short story, he got married. But after that conversation, I was out, having driven overnight to get to the airport in Jacksonville so I could catch the flight to come up to New York. I landed in Zurich, which is primarily German and Swiss German speaking, compared to the Western side, which is more French speaking. And I began the day exploring. I'd previously found a couple of events taking place over the weekend through meetup.com that I thought I could take advantage of. In the meantime, I walked around, walked by various companies that I had known about previously, and tried to get my bearings in a new city. Along the way, I used Uber to get to a town slightly outside of the city, and the gentleman who was my Uber driver, I found out is a human rights worker. He's from Egypt, he's lived in Switzerland for over 20 years, and he frequently speaks at the United Nations. Living in Switzerland while raising children and working for a human rights organization means that extra income is going to be needed and he supplements that by driving Uber. And so we were having a great conversation about some of the work that he's been doing and by the end of the car ride we had made an arrangement for later in the week, later over the weekend, I would come visit around dinner and he would teach me the Coptic alphabet if I would help his kids practice a little bit of English. It seems like a good trade to me. Later in the day, I was able to meet up with that online group I found through meetup.com. The event was organized at a bar eatery near the center of the city. What kind of group? A German and Russian language exchange. Place to practice either one. So I signed up, went to the went to the meeting, and found out that I've reached a point where my Russian is officially better than my German. It was incredible, that conversation. Even amidst us trying to work with each other in German, Russian, or English to make sure we each understood each other, we were able to practice the these languages, we were able to actually have conversation that's about real life. It's more than the typical conversation you might have in a classroom when you're trying to imagine scenarios or role play scenarios. This is real life. And in that meeting, the people who joined, a lawyer, a business owner in the aerospace industry, an electrical engineer, and a manager at a hedge fund focusing on alternative markets. What a group. What an opportunity. Interestingly enough, none of them were from Switzerland. They each had their own own story, their own reasons as what brought them to working in Switzerland. I was able to find out that cryptocurrencies are something that are that's being investigated by this hedge fund manager as an alternative investment option. I got to hear about how the economies of Switzerland compare to the home countries of each of these individuals, whether that be Germany, France, or Poland. I heard how long each of them had been studying their language, their reasons for learning Russian when they're working in this German-speaking area. I made new contacts, new friends Relationships, new relationships that are now a part of my network, all from stepping outside of comfort zone, this being exposed to meeting brand new people in an uncomfortable context where I'm not fluent in another language, but I'm practicing others and I don't like to mess up. I don't like that initially, but recognize how much it helps me grow. I put myself in that situation and this is what came of it. You can be in an airport, you can be on a taxi ride or an Uber ride, you could be at a bar, you could be at a sports event. These are all events that you can actively choose to engage with the people around you. Additionally, you can seek out those events, seek out the places where you can have these conversations, where you can meet new people. Meetup.com is a great place for that. Couchsurfing is a great place for that. There are all sorts for you to find people. And so far, I've had nothing but positive experiences. People that I've added to my network that I feel comfortable reaching out to if I have questions about something that they're an expert in. One more story from today. I didn't have service on my cell phone, so I was at the mercy of wherever I could find Wi-Fi. And depending on who I would speak with, 
with it meant a combination of German, English, or French to try and communicate properly with the limited vocabulary that I have and that they have that we shared. But on one Uber ride back into town, the driver I was speaking with in German was having a conversation with me and I ended up sharing languages that I might be able to converse with him if there was something easier than German. And I mentioned Russian and he lit up. He said he's from Bulgaria, that he can understand some German. And so what followed was a 20 something minute car ride back into the city where we were jumping back and forth between mainly Russian, little bits of German, and even less English. I did not expect to have an opportunity outside of a dedicated meetup group, if anything, to find someone that I could practice some Russian with. When you get in a taxi, do you go to your phone? Do you stare out the window or listen to music? When you're on an airplane, do you watch a movie and keep your headphones on? When you're in your office break room, do you make sure not to have eye contact, contact with anyone? These are just some examples of opportunities to build these kinds of connections that oftentimes surprise you. They're uncomfortable, but the experiences that you can have along the way are incredible. You're building your network. LinkedIn makes it especially easy for keeping in contact professionally, and you're growing. Every time you choose to open yourself up to what's uncomfortable, you become a little bit better at saying yes to that uncomfortability, saying yes to pushing your, your limits, pushing you outside of your comfort zone to taking risks or taking steps that are for your good, for for your development, for your growing knowledge, your growing expertise, your network, all of these things come together and are building you. You don't need to go to some special event or a conference. I'm not speaking against these things. I'm saying, don't you think, don't you start thinking that the only way you can find the right people is by going to such a thing. The only way you can practice a certain language is in a certain country, or the only way you'll find answers to a particular question question is only from a single person. Look around you and don't drop the eye contact. Introduce yourself. Step out of that comfort zone. Find new opportunities for meeting new people. Expose yourself to that. Keep building that network. Keep growing.